Today, I'd like to try something a little bit different. You might remember a while back, I did a video where I compared the Rode PodMic up against the Shure SM7B, a very legendary vocal microphone. And in that video, it was pretty clear that the Shure is overall a better microphone, but it normally retails for $400, whereas this guy, the PodMic, as you might know, usually sells for $100. So for the cost of one Shure, SM7B, you can get four pod mics, which means that if you're like me and you work with the Rodecaster Pro, a mixer that has four XLR inputs, for the cost of one Shure SM7B, you can have an entire podcast setup. And so far, I've been really, this looks, almost looks like an award, like the podcast award. So far, I've been really happy with the Rode pod mic. I actually own two of them. I love them. I think they are terrific. Of course, a lot of what makes a microphone sound good depends on your specific voice and your preference in terms of audio processing. But I still had a question. In the $100 price range, there are a lot of really good microphones. Like you have a ton of options for great mics. Even going a little below 100 to like the $75, $80 range, there's some really good mics there. I was wondering, what about the super budget price range? There's this guy right here, the newer condenser microphone kit. Really catchy name, I know. So this sounded like a good deal at the time, but now let's see if it actually sounds like a good deal. I've never used this microphone. I don't really know much about it. It got decent reviews. The key component, it was $25. So, very similarly to how you could get four pod mics for the price of one Shure SM7B, you can get four of these microphones for the price of one pod mic. I'm really curious to see if that's a good way to go or if you're better off spending a little extra and getting a higher quality product. So let's dive in and check this out. We'll be doing some sound tests with this, but first let's see what you actually get for $25. I haven't gone through and opened this yet. So we get to do a little unboxing here. All right, we got our instructions. Oh, it actually comes with an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable. You get a you get a windscreen. That's not too bad. It's really thin. You get this little thin foam windscreen. You do also get a shock mount, which is shocking because the price is so low. And this thing feels not too bad. It's made out of metal. It's got some foam in here. It's got a smaller mount than normal, but I think that's so it can more easily mount to something like the Rode PSA-1. Very cool. And of course, oh, we get a packet of Harmful If Swallowed. And of course, the main event, the microphone itself. So it's gold and black, actually looks pretty cool. I know that when it comes to microphones, the looks aren't the most important thing, but with a lot of people doing broadcasts and video podcasts and things like that, a lot of times you do find the microphone in the shot with you, so having something that you think looks good makes sense. It's one of the reasons I actually prefer the pod mic. So that's everything your $25 gets you, which is not a bad deal. Right off the bat, the build quality of this is very different from the build quality of the pod mic. The pod mic is one of the heaviest mics I've ever used. It's a very sturdy microphone that could cause some serious damage if you wanted to. This is much more lightweight. The thing I noticed, which is actually kind of a bummer, you saw me just take this out of the package right now, but there are some scratches on the body that were there as soon as I opened it. Nothing that's really gonna show up on camera, but when you just take something brand new out of the package and it's scratched, it's kind of a bummer. And of course, I'll put a link to this down in the description, but if you wanna know the exact model, this is the NW800. Kind of my fault in terms of a comparison because this is a dynamic microphone, this is a condenser microphone. The difference being that this has a lower output signal but can kind of handle a wider variety of sounds, whereas a condenser microphone might be more apt for vocals specifically, but it also benefits from phantom power or an external power source. Fortunately, since I'm using it with the Rodecaster Pro, I'll be able to give it the phantom power that it needs. To put the mic in the shock mount, you just sort of squeeze these wires. Now, of course, it comes down to what does this sound like? So let's test it out just a little bit. Let's grab the Rodecaster. One thing I did notice was there's just a little adapter down here, so if you take this out, then it has a more standard microphone mount that will fit on standard mic stands. This is always the most popular question I get in my microphone videos are about these little tabletop stands. These are little Samson stands that I like because they're shorter, but this table is also taller than a normal table. These are on-stage brand stands that can extend out a little bit. 
and they work great as well. So I'll put links to these down below, the taller stands and the shorter stands. Taller ones would work really well if your typical table is normal height, like 30 inches. This table is actually a little bit taller than that. So I like the shorter stands so I don't just stare behind the microphone and you're trying to talk to someone and this is all that you see. And for right now, the beginning of this video, I've been using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, as always, just for my normal audio. But in a second, we're gonna switch to these mics pretty much for the rest of the video. And we will put the newer mic, because <laughs> it's the newer mic, on this mic stand. This is sort of strange because it feels kind of strong and cheesy at the same time, so I don't know how long it'll last. But you can kind of get an idea for how the shock mount works. Right off the bat, what I can notice is I'm hardly getting any signal off of this mic. If I turn up the pod mic, you can see the levels shooting up right there. This mic, the new one on channel two, it's up all the way, you can hardly see anything. That's really because of that phantom power. So all I can do is go into channel, level, turn on phantom power, and now we can really see this is, I can turn down the gain significantly, which is great because the less gain you have, the cleaner the signal will be. Now, as I'm setting up these microphones, I realized I was gonna make a bit of a mistake. They look kind of similar, but they don't work the same way. The Rode pod mic is designed basically to have you speak directly into the front of it, maybe across the front of it. Whereas the best pickup pattern for this microphone is speaking into the, what looks like the side. That's actually the front of it. So I put it on a taller mic stand, which is gonna let it let me angle it towards me a bit more. So there's no effects turned on. This microphone is just set to the generic condenser setting. So we're gonna switch over to the newer microphone in three, two, one. And here we go with the newer microphone. It definitely sounds different than the pod mic, but it doesn't necessarily sound bad. And it has tremendously high out output. If you notice on the slider here on the Rodecaster, I have it turned down below halfway and I'm still getting pretty high levels, which means to get a cleaner signal, I could actually go into the gain setting turn the gain setting down and raise up the microphone's level and it should give me a cleaner signal overall. Now, of course, going back and forth, this is the newer microphone and this is the pod mic. I think right off the bat, the pod mic does sound better to my ears, but one of the problems with doing microphone comparison sometimes is that it doesn't necessarily let you appreciate each microphone in its own right. It's easy to go back and forth and think this one doesn't sound as good as that, but what about in a vacuum by itself. What if you were just using this microphone? Would it sound good enough? That's what I'm really curious about. And right now, I don't really think that it sounds great, but I am kind of optimistic that with some equalization, we'll be able to get a good sound out of it. So first thing, before we test it out, before we switch up some stuff, let's check out the pickup patterns on these microphones. With the pod mic, it's designed, like I said, to speak directly into the front. So if I turn the mic away from me, you can hear my voice less. If I turn the mic towards me, you can hear it more. It's really designed for you to speak directly into the front of it. This microphone is a little bit different. The side right here is really the front. And if I turn the microphone away from me, you can't hear me as much. And if I turn it towards me, it has a very clear pickup pattern of basically right here is where you wanna speak into and direct your voice with this microphone. I almost messed up and just talked into the front of it and messed everything up. I'm really glad I didn't do that and had to refilm this. Both of these microphones are supposed to have pop filters built into them. Pop, 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 pow, 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 power wheels, pow, pow, power wheels. And then if I go over here, pow, pow, power wheels, pop, 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 pop. I mean, they, they actually don't sound too bad. They almost seem to have pretty equally effective pop filters, at least in my opinion. This one probably seems a little bit weaker, but it does have a windscreen. So let's see if this actually helps. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, pizzas, pepperonis. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled pizzas, pepperonis, prize fighters. I mean, it kind of makes a difference. This isn't really the highest quality windscreen in the world. I bet if you got something that was a little, a little better, you could probably get better results. This did noticeably take down the pops, but I also feel like it kind of cut out some of the high end that was there before. And it really kind of seems like this microphone is lacking some of that balance. So. Before we make our final judgments, let's go through and play with this microphone, play with some of the settings. I'm gonna go back into the pod mic. I'm gonna go into my microphone settings, change it over to the pod mic setting that I normally use. Basically, I just keep most of the effects off. I do play with the oral exciter a little bit, add in some bass, adjust the treble a little bit, 
doesn't make a huge difference, but this is with those settings and this is without those settings. It just kind of turns it up a little bit and I like that. So now I've spent just a few minutes adjusting some of the settings on here. This is the microphone without any effects and this is the microphone with my adjustments. Again, this is with my adjustments and this is without any effects. So the differences might be kind of subtle, but basically all I did was I added a little bit of compression. It almost seems like it boosted the mids a little bit. I'm not an audio pro, but it just kind of got rid of some of that weird hollow sound that this mic had. And then I went into the oral exciter, added a little bit on the highs and a little bit on the lows. Now I could do something crazy, especially with like the bass and turn it up really loud. And then it's a super bassy sounding microphone, or I could take it all the way down and make it really thin. There is room to be flexible and it doesn't sound too, too bad. Here's again, without any of those settings. And then with those settings kind of just fills out the sound. So just for quick comparisons, this is the Rode pod mic. This is the newer microphone, but between these two microphones, so imagine you're having like a podcast and you're talking to a guest. If you're bouncing back and forth, I definitely think it would be possible to make them match a little bit. You might need to spend more time playing with the equalization on this guy. I boosted the RL Exciter a little bit just to bring in a little more of the highs. This is without the highs being adjusted, and now this is with them being adjusted. And the reason I did that is because... I think that it helps it match with the Rode pod mic just a little bit more. And I think you could pair them up for a podcast and it's not gonna sound too crazy. You could say like, hey, tell me about that thing you're working on. Oh, you mean which thing that I'm working on, that thing or the other thing? No, the one thing, the, the main thing. Oh, it sounds like you're in the same room with me on the same microphone. I am in the same room with you, but I'm on a totally different microphone. Wow, it must've been equalized and worked really well. That doesn't sound like $25 at all. Really, it doesn't? Eh. So with that in mind, in the $25 price range, is this a decent microphone? I think that it's not bad. If you have nothing or this, this is better than nothing, which probably isn't the best tagline for the company, like newer, better than nothing. And so who is this microphone for? It's for someone on a budget. If you have any kind of budget, don't get this microphone jump up to the $50 or $100 price range. I think the trickier part comes to if you need more than one microphone because now you can get two of these for half the cost of this or four of these for one of these. If you're trying to put together a podcast, put, put to, if you're trying to put together a podcast, if you're trying to put together a podcast, eh, it kind of makes a difference. It could also be a good option if you've already got a good mic and you have guests on your show sometimes and you just need a mic every once in a while and you don't want to spend full price on a second microphone, but you want something just to have when you need it. This could be a good fit for that. Of course, I am a big believer in the idea of buy quality, buy once. And what I mean by that is this microphone works. It doesn't sound the best. It's not built the best. I mean, it was kind of scratched and damaged right as I took it out of the box. Chances are just with regular use and plugging in, plugging out over time, you know, I wouldn't expect this to last a very long time. Whereas this or something like the Shure SM7B, it, I would expect this to last forever unless I like, ran over it with my car. And even then this thing is so durable, it would probably still work after that. The point being that you are saving a bit of money with this microphone, but if you can put forward a little bit more money initially, it's gonna deliver better quality and it's gonna last longer. So I'm a big fan of the idea of just bite the bullet, buy quality, buy once, and then you're set. So am I gonna keep this microphone? Yeah, I, uh, well, I mean, Amazon's not taking returns right now, right? But there's no reason to return this microphone. For $25, you get a mic, you get a cable, you get a pop filter, you get a shock mount. It's not a bad deal. It's not the highest quality mic. It's not the one I'm going to be reaching for all the time. But definitely in those situations, I've got two pod mics. If I ever need a third person, it's going to be nice to know that I have this and I can use it. I'm also actually pretty excited to see how I can mix these mics together to record my drums because drums are really hard to mic up. And even though this isn't the highest quality mic, it's a weirdness, especially the fact that it almost sounds like it has scooped mids all the time, I think might actually be helpful when mixing in for drums. So I might end up trying to use it for something like that. So the thing that I would ask you to do if you're trying to make your decision, is this microphone good enough for you? Do you need something better? Get the best microphone you can afford for your budget. If you are on a limited budget and you need the $25 microphone option, Forget the comparison with the pod mic and just focus on how my voice sounds right now. Knowing that I spent, you know, three to four minutes working on a basic equalization and knowing that if this microphone were yours, you could spend a lot more time dialing it in to the style that you prefer and to suit your voice. So if I had not used any other microphones in this video and I just started with this microphone, this sound, would it sound good to you? Would you notice it and say, hey, your audio sounds terrible today? Or would you be, wow, that audio sounds great? 
or would you not notice it at all? If this were a podcast you were listening to, you popped in your earbuds or put it in your car and you this is what you're hearing through your speakers as you're on your commute or whatever, does it sound good enough? And that's a personal decision for you to make. Ultimately, you want the best audio quality. Who cares what the name brand is on it? Who cares what the price tag is? But there's definitely something to be said for a quality brand reputation and maybe spending a little bit more money to get a higher quality product that's gonna last a long time. But if all you have is $25 and you need the best microphone you can get for $25, I don't really think there's anything wrong with this one right here. If you wanna know how the Rode pod mic stacked up against the Shure SM7B, I'm gonna put a link to that video right here. And I really appreciate all the feedback and comments I've been getting on my videos. I've been getting a lot of audio engineers from all over the world, from places like Latvia and Czechoslovakia. So I got feedback from a Latvian sound engineer and a Czech one too. Czech one too, Czechoslovakia also. 